always get a kick out of. I do a lot of school presentations, and his head's sitting on his knees. Now, obviously, you know, when they put it in the grave, it must have rolled till they, or maybe they sat there just for fun. Who knows? Um, but I tell the kids, maybe he was decapitated, and, you know, they get a big kick out of that. It's not, a number, it's not a bundle barrier. It's his head. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, and there again, we don't know if it was still born or died, at, you know, a few days old or a few weeks old. But he was a little over 16 inches long. So they took great care in removing it. Yeah, they took it dirt and all. Jesuit crosses and a King George medallion. The King George medallions were given by um, the Penn brothers when there were treaties made with the Indians regarding the land. So we knew that Indians from our village had gone to the treaty signings with Penn. Um, and I was fortunate enough to find one of these King George medallions in our garden one day when I was gardening. And I took it and my Jesuit ring along to an IMCAP meeting years and years ago over in Gettysburg and left out too much information as far as where I lived and all that kind of stuff. And of course, every woman keeps their valuables in their, you know, underwear drawer, as my kids call it. And they were stolen. So my King George medallion, I was lucky enough to find it and unlucky enough to lose it. But my Jesuit ring was in another box, in my jewelry box, and that I still have. During treaty signings from the Penn brothers. Now in another grave, there was a spoon found. Um, so we don't know if this person was extra special and was given this spoon maybe in friendship, or maybe it was traded, but um, it was figured he probably didn't use it. That would be the talk of the village, that beautiful, beautiful spoon, you know. One of the biggest mysteries was this string of beads. There was no body in with it. It was in a hole all by itself. So, how did it get there? Why was it left there? You know, when they moved, when they left in the village, why wasn't it remembered and taken along? Or was it buried and we don't know. It's just it's a total mystery. There's a close up of them. And when it was exhumed and cleaned up, this is what it looked like. And all the Jesuit rings and the Jesuit cross. Possibly it was given to a priest, and you know who knows the story behind it. Yeah, that's great. Something had a lot of value back then. Now we had it. I mean, that that soil was black all the way down to that, most likely. 
to be down there and find out. Like that. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. My brother once was groundhog hunting up on the ridge beyond our house, and he saw an apparition, I guess you would say, uh, of an uh, Indian man, and he came home and he told my grandfather, because he stood there and stared at it, and he said, Grandpa, he said, somebody didn't make it back to the village, and he said, I think we need to bring him back, and my grandfather said, okay. So they took shovels and a blanket and went to the spot where my brother saw the person, and they dug, and sure enough, they found a body, and they wrapped him up and brought him home and buried him up on our side of the road where all the graves were that my grandfather knew of, which he didn't let the archaeologists dig there. And he reburied him. And then every time my brother went out to do gardening, these blue trader bees, just like this, came to the surface. Over the couple years when he was still at home, he found over 200 blue trader beads. Um, and then gave them to his wife for a wedding gift. This is a Jesuit ring that was found. And there were a lot of white beads found also. Now, I don't have a picture of those um, restored, taken out and restored. There were also copper kettles found. And the neat thing I found out about the copper kettles were the women considered it like a microwave oven because if you cooked in clay and had to wait till the water boiled, and then you switched to a copper pot, the water boiled so much quicker. But the men also found out it was really easy to pound it down flat and cut arrowheads out of it. So the women probably had to hide their pots. <laughs> and also little, little um, bells were found. And if you've ever been to a powwow, you know bells are um, used on regalia. And probably the you know, same thing back then. Now, one of the biggest downfalls for the Native people was the, the trading of the rum. And this is a rum bottle. There were quite a few rum bottles found in the graves, which you all know the background to bad decisions that came from drunk Indians. It's backwards, but that's a close-up of the seal. And from that they could tell where, you know, the company that manufactured it and where it was brought from, possibly the West Indies. And this is um, a little map of the area that they excavated, and each little round circle on there was either a grave or a, um, a trash pit, or a couple of them were post hole, mold, post hole molds. Um, because this village was stockaded, double stockaded from what they uh, have figured, and it was a very, very large village and had quite a few long houses in it plus a few cabins, which were built by the um, uh, traders that would have been there. One of those traders would have been um, Peter Bazilian. He would have been there at that time. But that's, that's all I have. Slide holes. But how did you get these slides? Did you take these slides? Or? No. No, I was only about 11 or 12 at the time. And, um, I kept in contact with Steve Warfel from you know time to time and went to seminars and stuff and I asked him if I could get I knew he had the slides and I asked him if I could get a copy of them and he said, Yeah, sure. And he gave you know gave the slides. Oh, that's fabulous. You, I mean this is wonderful documentation. Yeah. It's so nice that you have memory and you, you could document this even in your He's your first lady there, too. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's a wonderful. Well, he was just so thankful that my grandfather allowed them to, um, you know, dig and do research and stuff. But I guess it was his way of giving that. That's wonderful. Very interesting. Thank
thank you so much. I've been trying to get you here for a year. <laughs> and finally, you know, but I would have liked to have a lot.